This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video we're going over manual therapy techniques, specifically instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you are a licensed medical professional with instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization within your scope of practice. Now, there's some gray area here. Not every state has legislation around these tools. If you're not sure, check. I would hate to see somebody getting in trouble because they watched one of our videos and used it on a patient or client when things did not fall within their scope of practice act. Now, these tools, just like all of our other techniques, fall within a model of practice, and we are very big on assess, address, reassess. So even though these tools are specific to perhaps fascial tissue, we're still going to base their use on reliable assessments, we're gonna use these techniques, and then we're gonna reassess, and if they're not effective, we're not gonna use them again for that particular patient or problem. In this video, we're gonna go over instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization for the plantar fascia. I'm gonna have my friend Sonia come out. She's gonna help me demonstrate. Now, some of you guys are probably thinking, wait a second, isn't the plantar fascia a structure with a propensity to get long? If you think of what happens to the plantar fascia when somebody goes into pes planus or feet flatten, if you think about what happens to individuals who compensate by increasing dorsiflexion at the transverse tarsal joint because of restriction in their posterior compartment here and a lack of dorsiflexion. All of those things point to a lengthening of the plantar fascia. So why would I be using a mobility technique? And this is where things get a little complicated. What happens to fascia when we stretch it or stress it with an IASTM tool is not the same thing that happens when we like stretch or release a muscle. In fact, there's some research to point to repetitive stretching leading to something called strain hardening, which actually increases the stiffness of fascial tissue. And if I think about increased stiffness, that could be a good thing for my plantar fascia in those who have lower extremity and particularly foot dysfunction. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and do the same technique that we have been doing of this kind of running these tools through the plantar fascia in hopes that in response, due to this strain hardening, which is both a hydration thing and stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system thing, right, that we get an increase in stiffness that'll support the arch a little bit better. So usually I'll start in this position to do these techniques. We're gonna go ahead and use a little bit of our Smart Tools cream here Right? We don't want to run through the skin before we affect the fascial tissue. Again, I can rub that in with my fingers and feel if there's any uh, particular points where I think there's an increase in tissue density or abnormal tension, or maybe even my patient being abnormally sensitive in an area. One of the responses we definitely get from these IASTM techniques is some desensitization, right? Altered afferentation, which might decrease pain a little bit. All right, so once I have our foot here, the first thing we want to do is we want to scan, right? So just like we did with the crural fascia, we're just going to start at the back of the heel and kind of run one of our tools through the length of the foot, right? And you guys can see here, I'm actually using this bat wing tool because it has a double bevel right, which means it's been shaved down from both sides, which is a little duller than those single bevels. The bottom of the foot's really sensitive. If I were to use this, this scanning tool, it can be really intense. Maybe I don't want to start that way. All right, so I'm going to scan and notice any different in tissue tension or tissue uh, feel, right? Usually you get a bumpiness in areas where we think there might be some dysfunction. And right in the medial longitudinal arch, he does have a little bit of that bumpiness. Now, with that being said, I now wanna kinda go through in different directions, but because it's her foot, I wanna be intentional and quick. If you keep at the plantar fascia, you're gonna drive your client or patient right off the table. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go in a couple different directions here, right? If I felt like this tool was too big, I could go to maybe the, the shark tooth tool, right? Come in, go that direction, go this direction, right? If I wanted to go across the foot, I'm not gonna be able to use 
this surface. I might have to use just the tip here and go this way. All right, remember the disordered collagen matrix, all right, is going to go in any direction. All right, come through here. Now, if I wanted to maybe frame the different sides of the foot, I could use this corner in here, kind of come across like so. All right, I might not be able to go in a lot of different directions there, but at least I'm affecting that fascial tissue a little bit with repetitive stretch and some shearing force. Come through this way. And then maybe last, I, I take it all the way up to the heel and we, we use this on that curl fascial video, but I'm going to use this smaller curve here and just kind of go straight through the heel maybe in a couple different directions. Just trying to affect the plantar fascia as much as I can. Now we talked about the strain hardening. We could also talk about mobility between fascia layers, although in the case of the foot, the, the restriction we're probably more worried about is if any of these tendons for the toes get bound down to their sheaths or other layers of fascial tissue. So what we might want to do is some of our more active kind of pin and stretch style techniques. So what I'm going to have Sonia do is flip over for me. And again, guys, you're going to want to go at this with intent. Know what you're doing. Don't mess around. This is not comfortable. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and right up underneath the ball of her foot. I'm going to pin down and then I'm going to have her dorsiflex and pull up her toes. How's that feel? Tough? All right. Good. And we've talked about how that might be the first step. Just pin down and up. All right. Pin down, have her pull up. All right. And then I could try pin down as she pulls up. I'm pulling through a little bit. That'd be a little bit more intense. Pin down, pull up, pull through a little bit. And then of course, if I wanted to be really tough, I could get down into position here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my chest to help add some overpressure and pull her toes back. So I'm going to pin down, have her pull up, and then just give her a little bit of overpressure, right? Pin down, have her pull up, give a little bit of overpressure. Right? So there you guys have it. All you're doing is basically going through nice long strokes through the plantar fascia. You guys can do some kind of like cross friction with this tool. It is going to be very hard to go in a bunch of different directions, but we can get some with the cross friction. And then don't forget to add a little bit of these more active mobility techniques with kind of like the pin and stretch. Supine is a little easier. So you're going to have them pull up their foot as you pin pull up their foot as you pin. And then of course you can add overpressure by placing your chest or the bottom of your rib cage over the top of their foot and pulling back their toes. Stay tuned for the close up recap. All right guys, for your close up recap, I'm going to use just a little bit of cream here on the bottom of the foot. You guys will notice I never stick my fingers inside the cream. That's just a good way to, to kind of spread any dirt and grime that might be on your hands. Rather use a freshly cleaned tool before each session. All right, and then I'm just going to go ahead and rub this in. Once again, I'm noting any changes in tissue texture or differences in tissue density. You guys will notice that I just kind of have her foot stabilized against my stomach and the bottom of my rib cage here. Again, I used just a little too much cream, so we'll go ahead and take that and just kind of moisturize Sonia's ankles here. That's okay. Then we're going to go ahead and use this, this battering tool from Smart Tools. Notice it's double beveled, which means it's got each side has been sanded down, and these are just a little duller than the single beveled ones. All right, so what I'm going to do is just pull through the tissue. 
Noticing any differences? You guys see how I push in till I just get a little kickback from the tissue. So I'm going through the softest uh, top layers, topest, most, uh, softest, most superficial layers, and then just dragging through. Noticing any differences. And I definitely notice a little bit of difference here in the medial longitudinal arch. So I could do some downstrokes this way, some upstrokes this way. But if I want to do different fiber directions, I'm probably going to have to use a smaller tool, like the shark's, shark fin tool. And then I can kind of do some like almost cross fiber or cross fiction type stuff. All right, go this way. You guys will notice I'm still at about that 30 degree angle. All right, so I'm not flat to the tissue. I want to make sure I'm dragging some tissue underneath the point of this tool. And then I can use this corner to kind of frame the foot, get at some of those other parts of the plantar fascia. I really try to affect as much as I can. Once again, going for that strain hardening and that stimulation of the sympathetic system, which might increase tissue tone a little bit via those myofibroblasts. Right? And then if I want to go over the heel, we're going to use this little hooked piece. Right? I'm going to use actually a smaller surface, even though the smaller surface happens to be a single beveled. I'm just going to watch how hard I press as opposed to the double bevel of the larger one of these. Right. Kind of come through here, go in both directions. And then it would be really hard for to show you guys in this position how I would do the pin and stretch technique. You guys saw a better view of that in the full body view. But just remember all you're doing is you're starting this way, pinning down some tissue, going to your 30 degree angle, and then go ahead and dorsiflex for me, Sonia. Then having her pull her foot down and her toes up. And then of course you could add overpressure. So you're pinning down this way and you guys can kind of see the, the depth that I'm getting into the tissue there with the tool and you'd continue to push through. So there you have it, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. Make sure to assess, address, using the intervention, and then of course reassess. And if you get the chance, these videos are not a replacement for live education. Of course, if you get the chance, you should take live workshops or find a mentor who's experienced using these tools or maybe a friend that wants to learn them too so at least you can practice on each other and give each other some tactile feedback of what you feel, how you felt the next day, what results you felt that you got. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave your questions below.